agnostic. I've lost my faith in, in my youth. Okay, so but but you're Jewish ethnically, yeah. but you do not believe. You, you do well, believe I do in not pra I do not uh, practice the customs. Uh, I do not keep the kosher. kosher. I don't, um, you know, um, I don't keep the Sabbath, for example. Okay. Okay. With regards to belief, I do have some sort of. Well, I do think I believe in some sort of. Uh, uh, power. Spiritual power, yeah, but um, I wouldn't jump really uh, too quickly to say that I believe in the, the Jewish God or the Abrahamic God in general. Okay, so um, you wanted to ask me a question? Yeah, I wanted to understand if um, uh, Alan was a transcendental, does he exist in, is he everywhere? Is he a defined entity? So uh, basically, we believe God Almighty's knowledge is everywhere. He has knowledge of everything, every particle. Um, you know, he's the all-knowing. But we don't believe he's in the creation. Okay. Like, is, he, is, he is he a mind? Well, well, he exists. Uh, when you talk about a mind, these, these terms, what do you mean by that? Do you get Does it? he have uh, reason? Does he, is he construed by reason? Well, he has, he has attributes. Like for example, he has a will. He has knowledge. He has power. He is wisdom, he is all-knowing, he is the provider, he is a sustainer. So he has 99 names that we know of, there's more. So he has those attributes that belong to him. Uh, so we do not liken those attributes to the creation. Yeah, and neither do we give those attributes to the creation. So for example, Christians believe Jesus was God. And we negate that. I think the Jews negate that as well. So it's very, 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 so we're very similar in that matter. Because we don't believe God Almighty, um, who has no beginning or end, uh, can enter Manifest the creation in the exactly, the exactly, and die. Yeah, and it's, it's manifesting is one problem, and then dying is a whole different issue, you know. And then dying for the sins of the world is another problem within itself. So you know, Islam rebukes these uh, claims by saying that God Almighty is a summit. Yeah, He's self-sufficient. Yeah, so that's why in Surah Ikhlas we have Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. Say He Allah is one. Allahu Samad. He's self-sufficient. He does not beget, nor is he begotten, and there is nothing like unto him. That's a very brief description of God Almighty. It's one of the powerful verses. He is one, self-sufficient, he does not beget, nor is he begotten, and there is nothing like him. So there's a negation of beget or begotten. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes. So he is one and self-sufficient from all need. So he does not, he's not he, dependent on anything. Anything. And therefore he caused himself into existence. No. He was, no, no he, we can't, we can't say he caused. He was he forgot. He, no, no, he's he, always existed. He always existed. Right. Ali, can I ask you a question? Sure, sure. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not a Christian, right? But uh, I'm just thinking of the possible reply the Christian might have to the fact okay. that you were saying God, God cannot manifest himself in a person and die as a person. Yes, yes. You said, do you believe uh, as a Muslim, do you believe that God is all powerful? Yes. And you, you also believe that he's um, non uh, he's self sufficient, that is, he's not constrained by any. Yes. Any rules. Okay. That so, his majesty. So, um, would you say. Um, so, if, maybe a Christian could say, well, he's all powerful, that means he has the power to manifest himself in a person and also die as that person. Um, and if you would say, well, that contradicts him being God and being self-sustaining, um, they can maybe say, well, God does not abide by the laws of logic. Yeah. So, yeah, well, how would you reply to okay. that? Okay, that's interesting because we get that question a lot. So, the premise here is that basically, God Almighty, if he is all-powerful, he can do anything. What we say is, that actually doesn't show his power. Because if I say, if God is all-powerful, can he cease to exist? Uh, that's a sort of paradox. Yeah, you, you would have to say no. You would have to say no. But when you say no, then can I say, well, I thought you said he's all-powerful. So in, he actually is counterproductive in the context where you're actually shooting yourself in the foot, whoever's asking this question, when the Christians ask this. Because we say, God does what befits his majesty. So I can't say God is all powerful. Okay, can God make a rock so big he can't himself live? Then does that show his power or lack of power? So when we're asking this question, the analogy, the example that I give is, it's like a very talented boxer coming to you. And I say to him, show me how strong you are. And he goes, okay, I go, let me punch you in the face and he'll hit me back. Does that show his power or his weakness? 
You know, because at the end of the day, what it does is, it doesn't show how powerful it is, but, but, but allowing me to it punch shows it. shows different elements or different manifestations of power. True, true, but that's a bit stupidity, not you. I'm saying like, for example, the, the act itself. If, I say, if you say to me, I'm going to take your phone, if you're as powerful, show me how patient you are, don't do anything. It falls into the category of stupidity, because at the end of the day, I'm allowing you to take my phone, my belongings, and the cost of trying to prove to you that I have self-restraint. So just to answer that question, we believe that does prove his majesty. So these kind of things are not actually a question, because to say, can God do anything, is like, for example, what do you mean by that? Yeah? So even Allah says in the Quran that, if I'm not mistaken, that God does whatever He likes. But the point is this, can God make a rock so big He can't lift? It's actually an invalid question. It's, it's actually a very silly question. So when the Christians come to us with this, that's how we try to reconcile and say, look, you're not showing His power. He's not showing His power when He's going to the toilet. It shows His weakness. I, the, the thing that I'm not clear on is if God, if Allah is all powerful and all loving, his benevolence. Okay. Um, then how how does how did those two attributes how can you reconcile them with free will? Because if he knows what we're going yeah. to will, yeah. then how how and, and then we sin and ultimately end up is it Jehanna? The ha Jehanna. Jehanna. Yes. Are then, you guys have something to say? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think it was a, right. Had originally the word may have come from a rubbish sheep outside Jerusalem. Anyway, so so if he's all loving, why would he create beings which are inevitably going to end in Jehanna in hell, eternal suffering? Um, okay, that's a good question. So this question, actually, Muslims ask this question as well, um, and it's a question where a lot of us we kind of grapple with. Now, I found I want to say a formula, but I found a way of um, because when a person asks this question. They are ridding themselves of accountability. What they're saying is, if God knows where I'm going to go, then what's the point of me doing anything? And I'm like, well, why don't we use that logic in the same way and say, well, if God knows I'm going to go paradise, you know, why is it only with hellfire? Why do we apply it with the paradise? So this is the way I kind of found an answer to it, because when it talks, we're, we're not, we're compatibilists, yeah? So we don't, we're not hard to determine this in the context that we just believe that God is in full control only. No, we believe God knows, he has willed our action, yes, and also we have free will. How they work together, we don't know. It's a mystery, we do not know. But, check this out and tell me if that makes sense. What's your name? Strabo. Strabo. That's a very unique name. It is. I actually like it. Strabo. Rare species. I haven't met another Strawberry. one. Strabo, I like that word. Gal. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your Gal. name? Gal. Ali. Ali. Ali, Ali yeah. Gal and Strabo. Yes. Yeah, Strabo. That's yeah. a very, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so. My real, my real name is Erdi. Erdi? Yeah, that's my real name, by the way. Yeah, that's my MI5 name. <laughs> so, okay, let me put it like this, yeah? So, Strawberry and Gail. Gal. Yeah. Gal, Gal, sorry. Gal? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Gal. Gal in my country means come. Oh, yeah. Gal, okay. So, Gal is someone who believes he's going to go paradise. Strawberry is somebody who believes he's going hellfire. Argument's sake. You both believe in God, but you, you're a pessimist, you're an optimist. Yeah, you're optimistic, you're optimistic, pessimistic. However, Strawbrew, yeah, believes he's going hellfire, but he, argument's sake, yeah, let's go with the Jewish uh, thing, yeah, put it down for a second, yeah. He believes he's going hellfire, but he still sticks to the Sabbath. He still does whatever he needs to do. Yeah, I don't know what you guys think exactly do, yeah. So he follows the commandments, yeah, he follows the commandments, okay. Um, I think you've got a festival coming out which you guys drink alcohol, like, you know, it's coming up soon, yeah? Okay, so he's doing everything God tells him to do. Gail is someone who believes he's going in paradise, but he does none of the good deeds. Now, both of you, if you stand in front of God, you as someone who believes go in hellfire, and you've done all the deeds God told you to do, do you think God will send you to hellfire or heaven? Well, I, again, he determined that I do those good actions, so yes, but that was also determined. And if Gao could be a, a blind optimist but still commit acts of immorality, but he has no power over his will. So it's, that is an interesting argument, but it only takes it back a step. There's still that... Okay, firstly, just a disclaimer. Yeah. 
We don't believe that. We believe God has proved our action, but He didn't force us to do it. We have free will. I made it very clear. Yeah? I tell them, they don't listen. They don't listen. <laughs> what I'm saying is, free will and God's uh, destiny, they do not conflict. They conflict in our mind because we can't grasp how God works. So I want to give this disclaimer. When I do this, you keep all of God's commands. Would God, would God send you to hellfire or heaven? Well, I would hope if I kept his commands, it would be heaven. That's the idea. Okay, Gail, based on you, you're an optimistic individual. You believe you're going to paradise, but you keep none of God's commandments and you're a sinner. Would God give you, would God give you heaven or hell? Well, if I am an optimist, I'll go to heaven. No, no, no. If you're optimist, <laughs> no, 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 no. You're thinking uh, I'm going to paradise anyways. Uh, I'll commit all the sins I like, and I'll do. I'll uh, go against all of God's commands. Uh -huh. Just because you think like that, Does but that you mean actually, that I'll go to heaven or hell. No, that doesn't mean. No. Good. Now, the point that I'm trying to get here is the following, yeah? Because I was thinking about this a lot. Just because one might think they are going to a certain destination, if they do not put in the work, they are not going there. Uh, if that makes sense. So just because you believe you're going hellfire, but you still follow the uh, follow God's commandments, which shows what? Your actions play a role in where you end up. I'll repeat again. Your actions, because the people that ask this question of the issue of if God knew, they are ridding themselves of accountability. They're saying, God knows where I'm going to go. What's the point of me doing anything? And I'm saying, no, hold on a second. Your actions play a role, regardless of where you think God is going to take you. Why did God instill what He wanted, what he, how He wanted humans to act? He no, gave, not instill. He well, asked you to do it. Well, I think it was revealed, wasn't it, in the in the Quran and in the Hadith? Uh, well, you know how how to how to be immoral. Exactly, evil. but but it's but not forced. He, 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 he only gave that information to a few people. If I was a cannibal in Papua New Guinea, I would be munching on other humans flesh and I would think okay. that was moral yes true, perhaps true. for me that was God's will so if, if Allah wanted to save yeah. the souls of yeah. the, the many then why did he spread the word okay um, good now in Islam Islam is the only religion that believes to follow it yeah we believe nobody will enter hellfire unless they heard the message of Islam so a person in the Amazon is eating the flesh of another human being yeah did the message of Islam reach him? No. Allah says in the Quran, we do not destroy any nation until the messengers have reached them. So Islam is the only religion that says a person who hasn't reached the age of puberty, a person who is mentally unstable, and a person who is sleeping, or a person who has heard the message of Islam, or not heard the message of Islam, or heard the message of Islam in a distorted way, like terrorism and all this kind of stuff, they will have their test on the day of judgment specifically for them. So the point I'm trying to say is Islam is the only religion we don't work like, oh, you didn't hear about Islam going hellfire. We believe a Christian, a Hindu, a Jew, an atheist or an agnostic has the potential of entering paradise if they pass the test on the day of judgment because if they die not hearing the message of Islam, how is it fair that God is the most merciful but he's going to throw a group of people in hellfire because they didn't hear about Islam? That's not fair. God is just. So that's what I'm trying to say. In Islam, if you hear the message of Islam, you know it to be the truth and you deny it, you're in trouble. If you didn't hear about it, it's a different story. So coming back to my argument, the thing that I was making here, uh, Strawberry and Gail, I'm actually bad with names, but that's a very, that's a, and yours. So therefore, it shows us what? Our actions play a role in where we can go. One disclaimer, in Islam, we believe is initially, the, the main thing is this, you enter paradise by the mercy of God. So no works you can do is, you can't come to God and say, hey God, look how righteous I was. You cannot pay God back for what the eye, the blessing of the eye that you have. So in totality, it's actually God's mercy that you will enter paradise, but does, does not mean that you don't do actions. You do actions because of who he is. He's deserving of those actions. So could you, so could you not have, um, uh, so you're saying that ignorance it, uh, if you are ignorant of the word, yes. then you're exempt in some respect. On, in this life, oh. but you would have a test on the day of judgment. So if I was ignorant, but I lived a terrible yeah. life, and I indulged in the worst acts of immorality, yes. I would still have a chance of getting into heaven, purely on the grounds no. that I was ignorant of Islam. No, because in Islam, for example... Sorry, there I'm, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, no, please. But, um, um, 
what I understand in Islam, you believe that everybody is born a Muslim. Yes, the fitrah. Yeah. So we, we, we answer your question kind of. We have this belief that you have the fitrah, the inclination to the belief in one God. Actually, Justin Barrett done a uh, study in Oxford University. Um, he, he came to the conclusion that children are born with inclination of a higher power. It's in them. It's inclination. We call it the fitrah. So what that means is you are born with the inclination of a higher power. And not only that Allah says in the Quran, I cannot remember which is in Juz Anwar, that He has created mankind with instincts of evil and bad. And whichever one you pollute will overcome. Meaning, arguments that you have a cup and you have two cups. They both fill to a certain point. Good and evil. Whichever one you fill up is the one that will overcome. Meaning, um, purify the evil side and the goodness will come out. Can, can, you, can you not explain good and evil um, in terms of biological necessity? You say we needed to form the mor morality, otherwise we, would be, we wouldn't be successful. We have to live together. We're social animals. And a prerequisite of being a social creature is understanding justice and abiding by justice. Who defines that? Well, because, because as an this is why societies differ so dramatically. Yeah, of course. So, uh, as you said, in the Amazon, they had cigarettes. You tear yeah. someone's heart up and the sun rises. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Papua New Guinea, you yeah. eat your family members if they don't. So there's this vast uh, diversity of ethics. Yes. And that can be explained by um, what's practical in an environment. Because yeah. they have different environments, different contexts, and good and bad reflect them and promote the group, support the group, help it survive as exactly. one unit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think when you think about Occam's Razor, he was a medieval priest, he said, don't, um, uh, don't multiply entities beyond necessity. So if I can describe gravity and give you the formulas, yeah. and then I say, oh, and there's this strange beast in the middle of the world <laughs> gra grabbing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no point in doing that because you, this, you've explained hey, buddy, it all. How oh, how are you? Yes. Good to see you again. Yeah, yeah I'm back. Yes. The, the addiction of debate continues. I'm too hooked. <laughs> no, not debate. We're having a dialogue. Yeah, it's a dialogue. Yeah. I'd yeah, say. Yeah. So anyway, going back to it, you, you, so you can't you explain. There is sim there's a simple explanation, I think, yeah, yeah, to, to morality, yeah. to the, yeah, the laws yeah. of nature, yeah. and we do. And there's no necessary reason to refer to some higher power when we have perfectly good explanations already uh, that we can look to. Look to. So, Shrabu, what you've done is the following: yeah? you have looked at a phenomenon, and you said because we have a explanation by a science, by empiricism. Therefore, why do we give credit to God? Kind of. Now that, to me, is, 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 is not, I wouldn't say that's correct. Because what you're doing is you're getting the credit of God and giving it to some kind of our biology or evolution, whatever it may be. What we say is, we are creatures that we have uh, certain characteristics. Yeah? These characteristics cannot come via blind processes. It cannot be. Even like when you're talking about cultural relativism, like for example, in the in Amazon, a person is like this, you know, and to me, that might be wrong to him, that is right, etc. And this is discussing metaethics as well, it goes in detail, yeah? Um, the point I'm trying to say is, at the end of the day, with that thing uh, that you're talking about, what we say is that God Almighty has created us in such a way, in that way, that there are people that, for example, the science we talked about, it actually helps us as Muslims. You know why? It helps us through monotheists. Because we want to get rid of false deities. Allah says in the Quran that those who go to these statues and leave them food, that when a fly comes and snatches their food away from them, they can't even protect their own food against the fly. So what God is doing is saying reflect. What we're saying is with the example that you gave about gravity, these people might trick people and say, no, there's this monster that pulls everyone down. And we say, no, that's nonsense. What we say is God Almighty has created a system, a physical law, which is gravity, and there are also metaphysical laws that are in place. And we attribute that back to God. What you're doing is this, which I agree. There are people who take advantage of people that are maybe vulnerable or maybe ignorant and ascribe it to deities like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this and the fund is going to strike. And the fund is strike and it goes, oh, look, see, I told you. We say that's nonsense. We're on the same page. But let's not take away from the credit to God and attribute it to man just because there are people who do these kind of things it's fraud so let's not because what you do is you're taking away from the credit of God I think I think the one thing that humans have that cannot be explained 
on this one is our appreciation of beauty. We can trace it, we understand it. I think that's the vibe. I think that's about magic. Okay, but Shoru, yeah. you said, you said that, uh, but, design and beauty. Yeah. The, what about I, the one who's created us? Well, I think we have, we, we, the beauty of humans is that they can create themselves. How can they create themselves? Well, I think we have the imagination of reason and we can explore that, push it to its limits and, uh, and understanding. I think we create, we're creatures of creation, um, we can create beauty, we, we're creatures of love and compassion. And I think we can- Not all the time. No, 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 <laughs> definitely not. But when we are that, I, I think that it, surely that is that is beautiful, and we can we can believe in ourselves as humans and individuals. And when we believe in ourselves, when we're not self-deprecating, and we try and hold ourselves to higher moral standards, then we become better as a species. I don't think we need the the Quran or the Hadith, the Bible, um, to to inform us on how to live or what to do. I think it's within and we just need philosophy and reason to guide us. Okay, but the thing is against philosophy and reason. Who, who decides this? For example, if you believe, if you're, are you an atheist? Uh, I don't know, I'm here to find okay, out. Okay, but the thing, is here, well, the thing is here, how could you even, how could you even trust your own intellect? This is the thing, yeah, exactly. Reason cannot justify reason. You cannot look at your eye and think, yes. am I seeing the right thing? Because you only have two eyes. Exactly. exactly. How do you know you even exist? Well, exactly. Well, you, at some point, you have to take a leap of faith. Ah, okay, so good. Put, this is where I think God comes in as a, as a, as a stop. Because otherwise, you just go down and go, what if, what if? It, it, and it's an infinite regression. Exactly. And you don't know anything. Well, so exactly. There has to be a foundation. Exactly. That foundation to us is God. Because you said you have to take a leap of faith. Because otherwise, you're going to go into like, um, who's that who said, um, I exist, therefore I am? Ren Descartes. Ren Descartes. 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 Yes. 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 Yeah. So the point is this. You go into a point of uh, skepticism, extreme skepticism, where you lose your mind. Yeah, so the you're point, going to say. Well, exactly. So what we're saying is God makes sense, and what we're saying is that God Almighty is the one who's created all of this. He deserves worship. He deserves worship. Like you're talking about beauty and, and appreciating beauty. What about the fact that God has created such beings like us? That is, is a beautiful creation. How could we not give that credit and admire that, and we give it to some kind of a random uh, agent? You know, energy, or we just came. That to us is the highest form of injustice towards God Almighty and ingratitude. We look at planes and the way planes work, and we admire them. We call them beautiful. We thank the person that made it, that helped us to travel to the other country, the, to the other side of the globe, in hours when it took us months and years. Yeah. How is it that we do not use the same analogy, or we don't use the same appreciation and gratitude to the very creator that gave him that intellect to make the aeroplane? Well, I think the aeroplane is obviously a combination of metal and wires, glass, and other things. I'm no, I'm not a, I'm not an aero. <laughs> yeah, but I would say that humans, obviously, we're conscious. We're conscious. We're not like any other creatures. We're unique. I think, yeah, perhaps there is room to believe. You, there, you have to somehow refer, understand why we can converse like this. Why we can converse like this. And it might be God. I'm, I'm, I don't know. That this it, is, it can't, what, you I say? To, what I would say is, why not refer to anything else like a false idol, some golden spirit with teeth? Then I don't know how uh, exactly. I don't know if it's any more true to believe in some strange teeth cut, teeth clawing devil than it is for, to, to believe in. We can no, we can because the but, thing, the, the, the thing that you're talking about falls back to the thing that you said about an, an individual talking about gravity and calling it some kind of a monster. You're doing the same thing. What you're doing is you're going back to why can it not be this monster or has shot maybe? We say that is a creation. The creator has to be self-sufficient. That is, that thing is not self-sufficient because it was made by somebody. That, cre that that statue, that idol, that gives it that sharp teeth or its characteristics, the way it looks. But I, I believe that, that Islam was was a religion that was created from humans. I don't think. No, no, no that's that's look. We'll, yeah, we'll come I, to that's all. But, but I think it's the same thing. I think yes, this golden idol. No, no, but I'm talking. So I'm not talking about Islam. I'm talking about God. Okay. I'm not so, talking okay, about religion. Yeah, yeah. Okay, God. That's so. Can we accept that yeah. God 
has to be self-sufficient. The creator. Yeah, the creator. I think the creator is, but I think our, he, I think we have created him. No, 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 no. You are saying, okay, how, how can we create him? We have, we have, we have, we have. Well, I think we are the creator. I think we're not made in his image. He's made in our image. No, 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 exactly. So, one, one, one second, one second. Let's take this one second, yeah? So what I'm trying to say is the following, yeah? What I'm saying is this, yeah? Very simple, okay? We know, for example, that there are dependent things, right? That cup is dependent, right? Okay. Dependent on what? I mean, Something like other materials. Yeah, for you, its okay, yeah. It, or, or okay. Atoms, quarks, yeah, yeah, exactly. That kind of can, can yeah. this, can that could have been another way? Well, also manufacturers, it's shit. I hate print, but yeah, I'm, I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know. Yeah, like, what do you mean by okay, that? Okay, let me, let me break it down for you. There's three types of existence. There's possible existence, there's necessary existence, yes. and, and there is impossible existence. Okay. And impossible existence is, can we have a triangle circle? Yeah, okay, I understand this. Okay, yes. can we have a triangle circle? No, obviously not. So we take that out. So that's an impossible existence. Never go to okay, then we have possible existence. Possible existence are things that are composed of pieces, can be any other way, yeah. and that are dependent. Yeah, yeah? and they are not self-sufficient. Yeah? Now, we are dependent. In our universe, the whole universe is dependent. Yeah? Now, therefore, yes. Well, I, I think that that's a, a, you're breaking the, the palette. And I think that just because the parts of uh, something are dependent, well, it doesn't mean the whole is dependent. No, you're talking about the uh, palette of composition. I'm, yeah. not talking, I'm not talking about that. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not talking no, about that. Okay. Sorry, I, that's, that's, hey, sorry, I've misunderstood. No, no, you I, what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this, yeah? That is composed of pieces. Okay. It can be any other way. This cup could have not been a cup. It could have ceased to exist. Our universe could have been another way. Okay. Like for example, why is there existence rather than non-existence? That, that, is, that is of course the, uh, the question. But um, I think that what, you have to, it's hard, language, when you try and describe what's outside the universe, it breaks down because there's no time, there's no space. There can be no cause and effect. No problem. So there, no, no problem. Can't you just say the universe has always existed and not refer I, to God? Okay, but I have not used the argument of cause and effect. No, no, I've you not, haven't. I'm talking about the argument of contingency. Okay. So I'm saying we have contingent beings within our universe. Yeah. And anything that's composed of parts, that could be any other way, yeah, that is dependent, yeah, cannot exist in its on its own. It requires a necessary being that is not composed of pieces, that cannot be any other way, that is self-sufficient self and independent. What I'm trying to say is you cannot have an infinite regress of dependent beings. You require a necessary being that is self-sufficient and independent that gave rise to these dependent contingent things. But why, why are we dependent? What evidence is that to suggest we're... we're well, we are. You are. Can, can, can you survive without food? No. So you depend on? Of course, food, oxygen, Okay, good. So, these are things that are dependent. The bottles of champagne, yes. Uh, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe you won't be dependent on that. Right, so, so the point I'm trying to make is that you cannot have an infinite regress of dependent things. You require a necessary being that is self-sufficient and independent. And not composed of pieces. I'm not pieces. Yes, I, 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 yeah. 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 That's my evidence as I'm bringing forward because otherwise you have two options. Like we said, there's impossible existence which we talk about. This is up. where I agree with you. I think that it's very, it would be, it's very strange that something could not come of nothing. So at some point you do have to say there needs to be a God. There needs to, I mean, a necessary being. Okay, a necessary being. Yeah, let's use the right terminology. Because it does seem strange to me that the, there, there's somehow a primordial soup from which life sprung. I think there's some issues with this, I think. But, it, but like, it seems more but, improbable, even than, than to me, that yeah. there, was a, there, there was a God who brought a necessary being. No, there has to be. Into, who stopped an infinite regress of, of, of no, no, dependency. No, not stopped. Not stopped. It's not, not stopped. started, caused. No, no, no. Okay. There cannot be an infinite regress of dependent things. There cannot be. It's a fallacy. You cannot have an infinite regress of dependent things because there would never be a point of beginning. Yeah, like, like, like there won't be a point of like infinite doesn't exist in the real world. So what we're saying is that there has to be a point where a necessary being that is opposite to a, uh, a contingent thing. 
what was the contingent thing? Dependent. It's dependent on something. It's composed of pieces. It can be any other way. The necessary being is what? Independent. Self-sufficient is not composed of pieces. But I'm, I'm saying there's an easier way to explain, to stop an infinite regression of How is that? Okay, okay, how? I'm saying that the, I think you can say, you can. You have to take a leap of faith. We've agreed with that. And you're, you're, you're okay, saying, but the leap of faith you're okay. taking is, is, is I, I think it's more, I think it's more, I'm not, uh, uh, well, I mean, it's it's no more preposterous than, uh, than yours. I mean, I could. Tell me be, why. Because I don't see any more reason to believe in a necessary being than than to believe the universe is just a brute fact that's always existed. Ah, why brute fact? Because brute fact is basically saying that's just how it is. Yeah. And that to me is a gap of science of the gaps. It's that basically I can't yeah. answer it and therefore I'm just going to say it's a brute fact. Can you imagine as a religious person if I came and said to you, it, it, you said to me, Ali proves to me God exists and I go, it's, God is just a brute fact. Do you think that would be an intellectual, like, think about it. Well, my, I, imagine I said that to you. I mean, they're, 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 yes, I agree. It's, I, mean, I don't like it. I hate, I hate having to say it. Then why do you say it? Because I think it's less, I think it's more likely. How, than, how, how, how? Look, you know, you're an intellectual, intellectual yes, you're okay, an intelligent person. But well, I've already said it's more, it's, especially, well, it's more likely because, how? because it's, I mean, you have, you have so many different entities to choose. Yeah. Why? Why this specific? No, but no, no, no. But what did I, I take, you? I take hey, the role as a necessary being. Yes. Okay. Okay. Not not not, not religion. It's excluded. Yeah. Yes. A necessary being. It, I agree. It's, it's probably in fact, maybe it is more reasonable than this saying it's a brute fact. The universe has always existed. You do need something to stop you know, the you know, infinite you know, no, no, regress. No, no, no. You know when you said the universe saying, to infer from a necessary being yeah. to infer from this this necessary logic. Um, you know, core. You need then to say uh, to create an entire religion from this necessary being. I think that's a mistake. I'm not talking about religion. Okay, 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 I'm okay, not talking okay. about religion. Okay, okay, okay. I agree with you. One I agree with you. I think you, you there perhaps there might be. Okay, okay, okay. This is unusual. I'm okay. accepting something on camera. <laughs> okay, here. okay. What I'm trying to say is, okay, no, we all we all do. We have to finish it. Okay. Just remember, what I'm trying to say is the following. Yeah, you said the universe has always been there. Right. You have just. You've basically accepted the necessary being. You've just applied it to the universe. Yes. See, what's I happened now, so what that means, Strawberry, is that you accept that we require a necessary being, cool. but all you've done is you've applied it to the universe rather than the creator. So what that means is the following. You are... Sorry about that. Sorry. So what you've done is that you've applied it... You've applied it to the universe. So what that shows is you accept that we require a necessary being, but what you've done is you've applied it to the wrong place. So we're in a good trap. So, so, okay, tell me why. Because you're saying my definition of necessary being was self-sufficient, independent, yes? Cannot be composed of pieces and cannot be any other way. The universe is the universe okay, composed of pieces. Hang on, I think I don't think we I necessarily agree with that definition. I think that a necessary being, as you conceive it, has to conform to that those attributes. But I'm talking about a very different type of necessary being. No, no, but I'm I, saying I, I the being. I'm saying that there has to be a necessary stop. Thank you. To stop this Thank dependency. Exactly. Yes. But I'm I'm not saying it's necessary a being. I'm just saying it's there has to be some necessary. Okay. The universe can be. I think you can apply necessity to the universe. How? Because I think it can. It, it's always existed. And no, no, where's evidence? No, no, no. Okay, no, there is no evidence. No, 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 no. You said it's caused itself and it's always existed. I, where's I, the evidence? I don't have any, but nor do you. Yes, I, no, no, I do. No, I do. That. No, no, no. Look at the difference. No, you're just saying there's a necessary being. Stru you're giving a definition. Strawberry. Look, look. We're saying there's necessity, and this, we're applying a different entity. Okay, hear me out. What did I say from the beginning? That we cannot have an infinite regress of dependent beings which are composed of pieces that could be any other way that are dependent the opposite to that is what a necessary being i said it with my own mouth a necessary being that is self-sufficient independent listen to me cannot be composed of pieces cannot be any other way that is the total opposite of a dependent thing therefore when you say the universe is a nece is necessary not be necessary what you've done is the following you've said 
the universe the is, is self-sufficient and I said it can't be self-sufficient because it's composed of pieces and it can be any other way the universe can can cease to exist it can it can expand it can be anything else I, so I, I am compelled to accept your definition of, of a necessary being okay if I accept your definition of a contingent being yeah. It's the, uh, Indian yes. One. Yeah. So could you just tell me what what your definition of a of a, net, of a contingent being? Is? Okay, a contingent being is, for example, let's let these mics. This mic is composed of pieces. It could have ceased to. It could have not existed. It could be any other way. Yeah, it is dependent, and it's not self-sufficient. Where? Okay, it's dependent on, on smaller objects. No, no, no. It's dependent on someone to create it okay yeah yes okay, so, so 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 for this no of course therefore we cannot have an infinite regress of dependent things because dependent things are many the universe the stars the sun our solar system us but, food but where in your definition of a dependent being does it preclude the universe from being a necessary being a necessary entity let me tell you why because the universe fits perfectly to the dependent being why because it's composed of pieces Yes or no? Is it composed of pieces? Yes. Okay. Can it be any other way? Okay. Now that's the first thing. That that's where we disagree. Because I think that a necessary necessity doesn't have to be the opposite of dependency. No, it has to. What do you I, okay. I do. I think that you can have an entity that's not composed of anything. Okay, sorry. No, no, but we. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. No, we we, we agree to that as well. But okay, it's, no, it's, it's no, contradicting no, no, there. No, sorry. I think the universe. The universe itself yeah. is composed of many things but in its in it's it, composed of pieces it's pieces yes yeah, it, but energy. surely, surely as a, a necessary being is composed of pieces no you've just given no. three attributes no, no, three no. definitions of a necessary good good being. good good okay yeah. so let me change the battery sorry good don't, don't okay. that's a good point okay that's a very good point we'll wrap up we'll wrap up in about a couple yeah minutes. okay <laughs> no, I, really I really enjoyed it i really enjoyed it uh, bro, what's happening with the audio? Where's our mic? Huh? No, we're using Sam Dower's mic. Where's our mic? Huh? Yeah, but you came. Why didn't you give it to us? Anyways, okay. You're going to have to take the audio from him. No, 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 when you turn it on, it will start recording audio. Yeah, yeah, no problem, but I'm just saying, no, 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 it's alright, right. let's just carry on, it's no point. But, but thing, connect, we're going to get it from Sam Dawa. We're wrapping up, we're wrapping up, it's no need. Okay, Is it, can, can I continue? Okay, good. So you said, ask a question. Yeah. Okay, so if uh, you've just given three attributes, you yeah. said the, uh, the definition of a necessary entity or being yeah. to be the opposite of a, de a de yeah, so yeah. Right, of a, depend yes. of a dependent being. Yes. Dependent beings are composed of things, Pieces. therefore necessary beings cannot be composed of anything. Yet you've given three things, three definitions. There's more than that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, there are, yeah. of, of a necessary being. Yeah. So what would you say? Okay, good. So for example, this is obviously some of our brothers, uh, like we follow the method methodology of the Salaf, yeah? the companions, etc. Yeah? This is where misunderstanding happens. Ibn Taymiyyah even mentioned this as well. Um, when, if you notice, I specifically said pieces, not parts. Because what happens is other... Uh, Set, I would say sets, but ideologies in Islam, yeah, theologically they differ with us, uh, like the Asharis, the Maturidis, etc. They believe, they, they use this to negate God's attributes. So that's why I said pieces, because Ibn Taymiyyah even says that he doesn't agree to, to the use the word parts, because what happens is certain groups, they use this to negate God's attributes. God's attributes are not parts, that's his essence. God, all knowing, all powerful, yeah, having a will is not a part of it's not a separate part of him. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I so see. what I'm trying to say here is it, when you say the universe, the universe is composed of pieces. So if it's anything that's composed of pieces is what? Necessary or uh, contingent? Well, I'm still not sure if the necessary being 
necessarily has to be the opposite of a dependent. No, no, but it has to. Okay, okay. No, how could okay. it not be? Come on, okay, okay, yes, okay. But I, and this is where uh, where I'm unable to really bring the conversation further. I don't know if anyone really can because we don't know how what the initial conversation of the universe was. Okay. And um, but there were base base substances. But it's still parts. I do, yeah, there were still individual exactly. parts. Exactly. So, so, yes. so what I'm trying to say is this here. From our point, let me tell you, okay. like, from our point, yeah. Anything that's composed of pieces is contingent. Period. So that's why in the beginning, that's why I said anything that can be any other way, composed of pieces, not parts, because we're not using that to negate Allah's attributes, yeah? Composed of pieces. And that is dependent, is contingent. And the opposite of that is what? That's why when you said the universe is necessary, not being, not necessary being, you said necessary, I said it can't be. You know why? Because the universe is composed of pieces. We talked about composition. Composed, it can be any other way. The universe can have, I don't know, an extra 55 million stars. It can be any other way. It is dependent. Therefore, it requires an independent, self-sufficient being that is not composed of pieces and that cannot be any other way. Now, you can come and say to me, okay Ali, let's suppose there's a necessary being. Why is that Allah? That is where we can have another discussion, yes, another, another time. One. It's Thank another you. one where we can talk about why it is Allah, why it is not these deities that, I don't know, these other gods, idols, etc. Because all of those things that you're talking about are all statues, Jesus. They're composed of parts, but they're composed of pieces. They could have been any other way, and they're dependent. We, we, we ask the Christians, what did, did Jesus eat? They say, yeah. Well, that's a dependent being. How could a dependent being be a necessary? Be necessary. But anyway, it's getting windy. Uh, yeah, thank you. Strong. I'll come back. I'll come back next week. I Hopefully, you're, there'll you're be a, some more. You are a true gentleman. No, you I are. Think it was a, a, I really enjoyed the discussion. Scholar. Very good. You're like a great um, imam. I, I'm an imam. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a nobody. Scholar of I, I, I'm, I'm a milkshake. Strawberry flavor. I'm a milkshake. Oh, well, you know, you know share. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm a nobody. These, these are these are things that we have learned. It's a very but interesting it's, argument. Yes. I need to think about the problem. Yes, yes. Watch it, but this is not from me. This is not from me. But it's just thought provoking for us to understand uh, that, that there is very, very good evidence and little room for doubt about God's existence. So I appreciate. It. Thank you very much. Okay, I really thank you. That's great. Come next week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, guys. So basically, we had a nice discussion. Very fruitful, gentlemen. A civilized discussion, which I genuinely like myself. Uh, oh yeah, hope you guys learn, hope you guys benefited from that as well. All praise it belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and yeah, may Allah bless you guys. Till next time, from me, Shrobru and Gel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.